great to have you here and we're really, really pleased that you allowed us to screen Limbo in the BFI London Film Festival. So thank you guys um, very much. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. And congratulations on the film. It's really beautiful. <laughs> Amir, your performance is lovely and I'd love to talk to you more about that in a minute. But I wanted to start, Ben, because it's a really unusual um, story. Your migrant crisis is, is in the news a lot, but in the headlines, they're always very black and white and, you know, move from um, vilification of migrants to pity of migrants. But this is a story that feels really, really different. Can you talk about um, what, what, how you developed the idea? Yeah, I mean, this was kind of something that was really essential to me, um, you know, when I started out on this journey to make this film. Um, it really came from a point where I was questioning the representation of, of refugees um, in the media. And as you say, it was this thing where we've got one side of kind of um, demonizing and one side of pitying and, you know, both of these aspects being dehumanizing. Um, and for me, I felt like there was this gap in the middle um, where we weren't able to sort of understand refugee, refugees beyond the label of, of a refugee. And that sort of, I suppose, my journey into the film is, is, is the, this kind of whole, whole part of the development, going back the way it's something um, that and started many years ago. Um, my undergraduate degree was in Arabic and politics. So I spent um, a year living in Syria, studying at Damascus University. And during my time there, I made lots of different friends. Um, I, I played in the Damascus rugby team. We went on tour to Lebanon. Um, and then uh, this was just the year before the civil war started. So when there, these representations of refugees were coming out, it sort of didn't feel like it, it, it kind of, that we were able to relate to, the, to relate to refugees in a way that, you know, I had so much in common with, with the friends that I had made in Syria. Um, so I started to, to question it um, from, from that point. Um, and I suppose in a way that was connected as well to, to my undergraduate studies in the sense that I ended up specializing in Middle Eastern cinema and that's really how I ended up going into uh, making films. Um, and my dissertation at that time was on representation of Arab and Muslims in American cinema and TV. So I was quite sensitive to this idea of representation um, from the beginning. Given my experience in Syria, I had a sort of, I felt like I had a responsibility to, to try and do something filmically about, about this subject matter. Um, but it was very important for me to focus on, on a very human level, on a kind of microcosmic, microcosmic human level. And I suppose avoid um, the sensationalized elements of the subject matter and avoid a lot of the politics of it as well. So it really came down to being a kind of an individual story about Omar's struggle and in, in terms of his sort of introspection and something internal, but really in terms of him, it's almost, I, I suppose the way that I looked at it was that he was struggling with grief um, for his, the loss of, of what he saw as his former identity before he, he became a refugee. And Amir, what was it about Omar that when you got the script, what, 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 did you, what did you think? Did you immediately know that you wanted to play Omar? Well, if I'm honest, when my agent sent me the script initially, um, I thought it was just going to be another story about refugees. Like Ben said, that kind of asks us to pity them, but not really kind of tap into their human side and, and, and actually understand that they don't want to actually go over they, they actually wanted to stay and, and live their lives you know and someone like Omar had such a rich rich background uh, mu musically and um so then when I read it um yeah I, I've never honestly cried or laughed at simultaneously at the same time from reading a script yeah. um and the way Ben portrays his characters he puts them in the forefront of the story and he gives them agency and and he reminds us that they are just as accessible as any other character that is from a Western background, um, which I think is important, especially if you do have an agenda behind it or anything, um, that the easiest way is to, is to attack it with humor and, and lightness as well. 
It's interesting because I, I think one of the things that's very, um, that you do really, really well, Ben, is move um, through quite sort of huge um, spans from to tonally, the film starts and it's uh, this dry, deadpan humour, but yet as you move through the film, you move to these incredibly intimate and melancholic moments. Um, and I think, I mean, I said when he laughed and cried, I think that you really, you really do that. How important was, is it to you, to the way you tell stories that you're moving across tones like this? I think that that's sort of an essential part of, of, of my filmmaking. Um, you know, again, this is, it, it, it's interesting. It's something that started out really, I think from a root of, of my influences. And I have to give some credit to um, Elia Suleiman as I was um, studying Middle Eastern cinema, as I went into that area, I came across Elia Suleiman and he, uh, it was just, it just, it was amazing the way that he dealt with such a, you know, serious political subject matter of the, the conflict um, between Israel and, and Palestine, but he used humor in that. Um, and I think from that point forward, I felt like th this was something that really, so, really connected with me. And, so, uh, and you know, I, I w wanted to go down that route as well. Uh, you know, and obviously with Picadero, it was a, it's a similar thing of, of looking at a young couple with against the backdrop of, of um, the, ec the economic crisis in Spain and, and, you know, how I could sort of use humor to, to tell a very human story with that sort of sociopolitical backdrop. Um, and then with with this subject of the broad subject of the refugee crisis, um, you know, again, I, I wanted to do the same because I felt like there's so much coverage of this subject matter in the media and in documentary. And it felt like, it, you know, to make a fiction um, film about it, it had to find its space. It had to be worth doing it. It had to be able to do something that that was different from what other media and other um, mediums were doing. So I felt that um, using, obviously using humor in that was something that was already natural to me. It was already part of, 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 the, of my process. Um, but it was also, uh, uh, the, the question is how, you know, how to, to switch the tone. It was also very, very difficult uh, to do that. And, um, it took a very, it, you know, it took a long time to write the script. There were many things that, that I wanted to avoid um, uh, in the script, uh, many sort of tropes related to, to this subject matter. And it was very easy to go down the route of the exact things that I wanted to, to avoid. Um, so there were quite a few false starts as well in, in the script writing process. Um, I'm really figuring out how to, to balance um, the tone with this subject and also you know to check it against in part of that that development process speaking to to people who had been through the asylum um, system uh, speaking to organizations who deal with refugees um, on a daily basis and kind of um, figuring out from from those perspectives as well what 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 the best way to look at this subject matter is if if, if people who had been through the asylum system would be happy to use, uh, to, to use humour in the treatment of this subject matter. So, yeah, it was a, it was a, big, it was a big process. Um, it was very difficult. It also was something that was balanced throughout as well, through the rehearsal process with the actors during the shoot um, in post-production. And it was, it was constantly something that we were sort of molding and shaping as, as we moved through the different stages of production. Yeah. Um, Amir, just, uh, it sounds like it was quite an unusual shoot. You guys were on a remote Scottish island. Um, it's also a film about um, four male lead characters. I mean, to, to you, you're obviously the lead, but for four men in a film isn't something you see very often. Did you develop the story together or was that all um, there in Ben's script? Everything was there in the script but uh, the connection we had to, we had to work on. And uh, I was, we were lucky in, in that uh, not only did we have a couple of weeks rehearsals to, to work together, because you know, with, with, with the film, everything is purposeful. So every, every movement we make is, is with intent. Um, and so we had to kind of get that 
pitch perfect. But on top of that, the layer on top of that is the huge responsibility that we had in representing um, these people, these individuals. Um, so we were very lucky and fortunate to meet with refugees who'd, who'd, who'd gone through the official route and, and, and via the UN program. Uh, it was a single men's group. And um, actually just going off what Ben was talking about using humor, when you sit down and talk with them, with the, with the Syrian, in the Syrian men's group, most of them were laughing and making jokes and all that trauma is internalized. Um, and actually, um, as Arabs, we always use, um, we always use humor as a mechanism to kind of get out of, uh, a situation or traumatic, uh, but I mean, obviously they, they went through so much to, and, and they, they convey so much strength to, to be able to do that. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, at least, you know, once a week we'd sit down with them and, and we, we, they would generously give us the time to, to sit with all four of us. and. From that, that was that was an immense help. So as soon as we got on set, we couldn't really complain about anything really because <laughs> we had that as a uh, as a as a uh, kind of uh, the, the catalyst towards it really. Yeah, can you talk about um, being on set and and what that was like? You guys were out um, literally in the middle. Yeah. It was a remote. Of an ocean. Yeah, it was a remote. Scottish island in your list and uh, there is zero uh, network, no connection. So you can't use your, uh, your phone as a, as a crutch if you needed to get out of any social uh, <laughs> uh, situation. We literally had each other, you know, there, there, was, there was nothing else to do on the island. I mean, yours is beautiful, by the way, it's gorgeous, but it was super windy, no trees. Yeah. Ben, I might be wrong, is it, was it 55 miles per hour, Gail? Force. Frequently, yeah. yeah. Frequently, we we would be just below gale force winds. At times, yeah. there were gale force winds. We couldn't shoot in that weather, but we would frequently have sort of six people holding down lighting stands and things like yeah. that. And, <laughs> um, and so, yeah, even in the, even in the shots, you'll see, you'll see. Uh, there were there were a couple of scenes where uh, where, ben, where Ben would be like, just try and try and try and commit <laughs> commit to the to the condition just use all those elements in the in the uh you know outside in in the scene as well so it was it was useful in a way although it was immense cold and uh and uh you know we had um well i had minimal uh stuff to wear <laughs> most of the time blue jacket the blue your jacket cat, your cast your plaster yeah. cast yeah yeah as well that was a big part of of the development process as well that i um wrote the script in part um on uist um also i mean on the uist i i feel very bad because the people from uist don't like it being called uist it's we it's multiple islands Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is multiple. It's the US. I spent, yeah, I spent time there writing the script and and be, you know, really in in a sort of peat fired cottage in the middle of nowhere with no signal, no Wi Fi, nothing, and just um, wandering around the island like Omar, um, <laughs> feeling the elements uh, and um, yeah, having existential moments. Yeah, so that, you know, the island was really, you know, part of the development as well. And, and there, there, you know, there's never been a film shot there before either. So it was quite a, you know, a crazy leap uh, to shoot on, on that island, you know, massive challenge uh, production wise. Um, but we looked all over Scotland and there was just, there was nowhere that really matched Uist, it, 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 it had the same feel feel as as Uist and the Uist. Um, so, in the end, I just couldn't I couldn't imagine the film anywhere else. What's lovely is that we had locals wanting to help as well. They would come over and say, "Can, can do you need a hand?" and and holding down any stands or anything like that. <laughs> ben, I just want to ask you. You've got such a distinct visual style, and I know um, you worked with Nick Cook on um, Picadero, and also again on this film. And how how linked? Um, you know, I, I love how you do sort of longer takes and characters sort of move through the frame. How linked is that to your storytelling interests? For me, it's something that you know. I think that the the script writing goes goes hand in hand um, with with the the filmmaking, and that it's 
particularly with these these uh, with Picadero and with with Limbo, I think that there's sort of similar themes in the sense of uh, an element of stasis in these characters. Obviously, there's certain kind of sensibilities that I have as a as a filmmaker and an aesthetic that that um, I like to use. But for me as well, I think that the cinematic language is very important to me. So uh, I'm really thinking about what each um, frame means um why we're shooting something in a, in a certain way um and uh but i also think that when i'm writing the script i'm i'm thinking about how i'm going to shoot it so as i say yeah it's, it's sort of like it, it goes it, it goes hand in hand um and in terms of working with nick um yeah i mean it's you know i i have a particular style myself and that's you know a particular visual style um it's something that's very important to me and you know i'll i'll sort of a lot of the time i'll go go out in location scouting and look at particularly look at the master shots look at the wide shots you know i work very closely with nick as well and and nick will um sort of improve on on all of the ideas that i have really so and this is also a film that's very, very beautiful. You've got a, such a gorgeous color palette. Um, how, can you talk a little bit about the design um, process? It's again, that's something that, that's very important to me. I, I think that in a way that I, it's, it's an interesting thing because I'm quite aesthetically driven. Um, but at the same time, I, I, you know, I, there still has to be meaning to that, that aesthetic. Um, so really, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about the, the production uh, design as well. Um, worked very closely with Andy Drummond um, on this film. Um, the sparseness of this film is really important. Um, very minimalist pr production design. And then um, I suppose, you, you know, using colour in that way also it, it relates to the sort of tonal balance of the film as well. Uh, a, a part of the way that I, I see this film and Picadero is, is almost like there's elements of absurdist social realism, but bringing the color into, into frames kind of balances the tone and kind of helps with that sort of underlayer of, of humor. But then I also want that color to um, relate directly to the environment that we're shooting in. So one of the things that we'll do, and it was the same thing with, with uh, Picadero as well, is we'll look at what colors actually uh, exist within the envir environment and keep coming up um, in sort of buildings or, or sort of on, on the walls or, you know, um, whatever. And, and with uh, US, it, we, we keep getting this dark green color and this kind of salmon pink and these two colors that you know, just came up everywhere so they make sort of form the base of the color palette for the film um, and then from there we sort of uh, you know build build everything else so it kind of feels naturalistic but at the same time slightly absurd it's slightly humorous yeah. and, and bright in the colors yeah and i think um that that sort of naturalist naturalistic and and also something that's a bit more sort of styled is um true of the performances that you get from your actors as well too and amir how much did you talk with ben about um sort of blocking and how he wanted you guys to move through the frame and it's, it seems like such a precisely paced um film in terms of performance too how did you guys get to that point there was a thought behind every movement I mean, every thought process, uh, every, you know, every action. Um, we were lucky that it's not often you get rehearsal uh, for any film, um, be it any budget. But uh, we had uh, we had a couple of weeks in uh, in Glasgow, uh, in Edinburgh, sorry. And um, yeah, we uh, we we would kind of uh, kind of choreograph and block all the all the movements. But also we would sit down with Ben one to one and we'd, we'd talk about our journeys and all our objectives and, and intentions in every scene. And um, yeah, all, all, the, all the basics were there really. So that when we were on set, we were just ready to, to do it because we were aware of the conditions as well. So maybe we only have like two or three takes for, for, uh, for each scene. So we had to be kind of sharp on it. 
Yeah, we we were actually really we were really lucky that we had that rehearsal period. Um, Amir and the other guys were really well prepared because sometimes we would actually there were times where we only had one take um, mm. uh, just because of the weather um, and uh, the, you know the actors were brilliant. Amir is brilliant, um, so always rehearse. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, even if you're at home. <laughs> but also, yeah, I mean, Vekash and I, we, in the, re in the rehearsal period, when we were in Edinburgh, we, we lived together. So we could always just talk about our characters and, and uh, talk about our process and how we feel about each other in, in each moment, um, which is a real treat. Um, so, yeah, we were very lucky in that sense. And it was the same with all our quabs as well. During that rehearsal, it was a really good time for all of us to bond. Um, mm. Oh, and they so, lived together as well. Yeah. And they live, and they lived together on. Yeah. Yeah, they lived together as well. So we, yes. you know, we wanted to work on that um, relationship by putting them together. Um, we also made you guys travel over land to us, right? Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, how can I forget that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that because was a long we journey. Want, we wanted uh, them to see how far it is first mm -hmm. of all, because when if you you can fly there in Glasgow, it's mm -hmm. you know in a tiny plane, but it's it's a half an, a half hour flight. If you go overland, you see just how remote it is, how far it is. Um, so I think that that was also really important to really kind of get that um, into the, into their heads and you know in that with the mindset of of the remoteness of the island and time. How much time slows down as well when you're you know be it making that journey or when you're on the island itself, you don't have a sense of time at all. And I think that was really useful. Ben, can you talk a little bit about situating um, for these four men within a community where they're outsiders? But, um, you know, I think we've, we've talked some about uh, the way that you balance humor and, and sort of pathos and humor and sort of naturalism. How, how much of that did you bring to depicting the Scottish community around, um, around these characters as well? I mean, again, I think that this was a this was a, another challenge in terms of writing uh, the screenplay and thinking about representation because I also didn't want to kind of create a negative depiction of the the Scottish characters. I think particularly because Scotland has taken on more refugees and there's many positive uh, stories coming out of Scotland in terms of refugee integration. So I also didn't want to create a negative depiction of of the Scottish characters, and it is a sort of cliche as well of how we we you know of uh, the, the depiction of of islanders so it felt like you know i had an awareness of that as well um and i wanted to be careful um about that but at the same time you know i think that at sort of that fundamentally one of the things that i wanted to avoid in in telling a story about refugees was that uh, i wanted to avoid this sort of um cross-cultural reconciliation story um, and I think that that was maybe that's quite sort of an expectation that we have of a refugee film that often will have a refugee film with a um, often driven by a, a white uh, character and it will be really at its core about yeah cross-cultural reconciliation so I wanted to avoid that and I wanted to really make it about um, uh, the refugee characters and and um, their sort of internal personal struggles and avoid that side of things. But those interactions um, were important in the film as well. Um, and I suppose the way that I viewed it was rather than it being sort of so particularly Scottish was that I, I kind of wanted it to be more of a, almost like the island itself, you know, the island itself on, is, is purgatorial. It's purgatory on a metaphorical level. I also wanted it to be almost like a pan-European response to um, attitudes uh, towards refugees rather than something that's very specific to a Scottish uh, Hebridean island. Thank you guys both very much for being here and um, Ben, thank you again for allowing us to include Limbo in the BFI London Film Festival. It's no, been thank you very much pleasure and uh, really, really look forward to seeing what you both do next. Amir, um, it's such great, it's so great to see you in a lead role and uh, more of that, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thank, Thank you. you.